So our car is still charging this morning and we want to see if the screen, the screen is still on. So the screen stayed on for uh, 15, 14 hours now, but we can see it's almost charged to 80%. It's on 70% or so. Let's have a look on the... And yeah, we are at 68% or so. But why is the screen staying on? That's totally unnecessary. I wonder if the screen turns off if I lock the car. It does. The car needs to be locked. <sighs> is this somehow in the manual maybe and I missed it again? <laughs> I don't know. I should really read the manual. <laughs> so now the overall question is, is it better to charge slow or fast at home on AC? Let's crack some numbers. So I'm just looking up some formulas on the internet how to calculate the voltage drop on the cable while connected to AC. Um, we found this simplified method here and it is dependent on the load you've got on there, what kind of power factor you have. So the easiest way is if you go online and find a online calculator like this one here. See it has 230 volt, one phase, 5 ampere load, 2.5 cable size and a distance of 25 meters. So right behind this corner there's my meter box. The cable goes all the way, comes up there. This is where the cable goes. Goes into the second uh, junction box here and the meter box and then goes into the power point to charge the car. And we also have the 7 meter EVSE cable connection 2.5 mil to the car. So I've all included this so we've got roughly 50 meters of cable length here in my case. And putting these numbers into this calculator here, 240 volt, 5 amp, 2.5 square mil, 50 meters, we are having a voltage drop of 4.51 volts, 1.88%. And we are quickly doing the 12 amp setting as well, which will be the highest setting you can actually charge the car with, with the mobile UMC adapter for the Tesla. And uh, 12 amps, same cable, same cable length gives us 10.81 volts. We now have the voltage drop for 5 amp and 10 amp for the cable. I multiply this one by 5 amps and I get 22.5 watts will be lost on the cable. While on the 12 amp setting with the same cable, same length, we will have 130 watts. So alone from this, the 5 amp setting seems to be the far better setting to minimize voltage drop here. So what I have done here, I have calculated the maximum power going into the car. So we're always charging on 5 amp here. So 1.2 kilowatt for all the settings and on 12 amp we get 2.8 kilowatt. This is the charging time to charge 10 kilowatt hours on 5 amp, 8 hours 33. 20 kilowatt hours, double the time, 16.66 hours and 40 kilowatt hours would take 33 hours. Uh, the same for the 12 amp settings, uh, three and a half hours here, almost seven hours and 14 hours to charge on 12 amp, 40 kilowatt hours. So I have now calculated the cable losses in kilowatt hours into this table here as well. And we can see on five amp to charge 10 kilowatt hours, we are spending 0.2 kilowatt hours just on the cable loss. While on the 12 amp setting, we are already at almost 0.5 kilowatt hours. So more than twice as much as on the 5 amp setting. And this goes all the way down to the 40 kilowatt. If we charge 40 kilowatt hours on 12 amp, we will lose 1.8 kilowatt hours on the cable. While we lose only 0.77 kilowatt hours on the 5 amp setting to charge 40 kilowatt hours. So from here it looks like the 5 amp is a clear winner to the 12 amp setting. And now we are having a look at the computer losses we have. So 150 watts, we assume it's 150 watt, I think it's more 170 watts. But let's go with 150 watts, 0.15 kilowatt per hour of charging times the eight hours it takes to charge 10 kilowatt hours on five amp, we will have 1.25 kilowatt hours loss just to operate the computer. So the longer I charge, the more loss I have, of course. And this is the disadvantage of five amp setting because it takes 33 hours here to charge 40 kilowatt hours and we will lose five kilowatt hours in this time period. While on the 12 amp setting, we will lose only 2.1 kilowatt hours for the computer. 
it charges faster. This is time related, not cable related. And I will now add these two figures up and see who is the winner. So, and drum roll, we have a winner. 12 amp setting is the winner. Charge fast at home, regardless how long. So we can see 10 kilowatt hours, 5 amp settings. We have a loss of 1.39 kilowatt hours, including cable and computer losses. And this calculates down to the 5 amp settings and to the 12 amp settings. And regardless what settings we have, the faster setting is better. We have less loss on 12 amp settings than we have on 5 amp settings. And you can even more minimize this if you would have a thicker cable. We have a 2. Point, we have a 2.5 millimeter cable here. If you would have a 4 uh, millimeter square millimeter cable, the losses on the cable would be a, a lot less here, here as well, but especially here on the higher settings. And we would come down a little bit more on the on the actual losses for cable and computers. Well, just out of curiosity. I have, um, so when you buy a Tesla Model 3 here in Australia, you will get the Tesla wall connector for free with the car. This can be installed by an electrician and hooked up to a three phase 16 amp power, which will give you 11 kilowatts of charging power, which is the maximum what the car can do. So the built in charger is three phase 16 amp. Just out of curiosity, I have added the 16M three-phase power here and have done all the calculation for it. And what we can see here is this setting has the lowest loss, um, including cable and computer losses. So to charge 40 kilowatt hours with the um, with a wall charger coming with a car, it loses only 1.3 kilowatt hours. While on the 12M setting with a UMC. 3.9 kilowatt hours and on the 5 amp settings 5.77 kilowatt hours so you are you are losing a lot more on 5 amp than on 16 amp three phase this is calculated with a four millimeter cable 50 meter length and 7.7 .7 volt loss so it looks like on ac um, the, the faster you charge the less losses you have in terms of the cables and internal computer so charge fast at home I've done similar calculations for the Outlander PHEV uh, months, maybe last year or so, can't remember. It's in season one if you want to look it up. And for the Outlander PHEV with the uh, um, switchable EVSE from Evolution Australia here, it was the opposite. The slower you charge the PHEV, the less losses you have on the cables because there's no computer. The computer in the PHEV is very small, the BMS doesn't use much power. It's unlike here, we have 150 watts, potentially even more with the computer and the Model 3. And it's a totally different story, as you can tell. So at home, charge as fast as possible and also probably get your electrician to install a four square millimeter cable instead of a 2.5 square millimeter cable to minimize losses. The costs should not be much higher for a four millimeter cable but you will have less cable losses as well while charging. And then charge as fast as possible. Not only you have the time benefit, of course, but also the losses are minimized in terms of all the other charges. So <laughs> that means I have to get my wall charger installed here. Unfortunately, I will not hook it up to the three phase power. Oh, well, I don't know yet. I'll make a separate video about this. It's a bit complicated. Okay, guys, anyways, so far this first um, calculation with the test lander today determine if you should charge lower, medium or high power at home and what the losses are, what is the best. So the verdict of this whole charging situation is we have to wait until the Tesla, scan my Tesla tool, the Tesla watchdog is here to actually confirm how much power the computer uh, takes while charging. This is just a number someone gave me. I haven't confirmed this on the internet yet. I th thought I read somewhere it's 170 watts, but we have to wait for the, for the app to confirm this number. Only with the app we can tell how much power the car draws while charging. So, interesting weeks ahead. And this is Andy from Unplug TV Australia signing off. You stay charged and we will see us again in the next video very soon.
Okay, guys, see you then. Bye bye. What we also have not included in this calculation are the heat losses in the battery of the vehicle. And I hope once the Tesla Watchdog app is here, we will get more information about the whole total loss cables, computers, battery, and everything else, charger losses.